everyone and welcome to the next lesson. In this lesson, we are going to be looking at the history of highway engineering. To understand highway engineering, you have to understand its history. A few weeks ago, Tesla announced advancements in self-driving technology. Now, self-driving technology has five levels. We will discuss those later in the course. But for now, we know self-driving is going to affect highway engineering in some way. But where did this all start? It all starts with American roads, a vast network connecting us all. But have you ever considered how were these roads designed? Those curves, lanes, intersections, they have a history. Now we are going to go all the way back. So we are going to start with the early road building, which was somewhere between 300 BC to 400 AD. Believe it or not, some of the earliest influences on our modern roads were started during the Romans. This is around 300 BC to 400 AD. Now Roman roads were built layered with layered stone construction which was demonstrating a number of key principles that allow for durability, drainage, that we still use today. Now, as the years went on, we went to something we call the, Mac the Macadam Road Revolution. This started around the 1700s. Now, in 1764, there's a guy called P.S. Marie. He was a French engineer and he developed a road building method which was using three layers of stone where he would excavate, then he would put larger stones, on top of that he puts smaller stones, and on top of that he puts his final course. Now this was revolutionary to the extent that in 1815, John MacAdam was appointed the surveyor for the Bristol Turnpike Trust in England. Now he began refining this, these construction methods um, and he started using compaction, he started using layering, and this is what now we know as the Macadam. Now, in 1816, Macadam presented this to the parliament, and what you find that in 1820, this was adopted throughout the whole of Britain. And you find that this now started spreading to other parts of the world. You find that in 1823, the US built its first Macadam road in Maryland. Now, as time went on in 1830, they started to invent something called tarmac um, that you all know now why you have to add tar to the other layers they had done which was improving uh, durability and removing dust now remember most of the times people are using bricks now we come to the early 1900s started using asphalt uh, for the binder for the road surfaces and this is what we're using to this day now you find that as the materials were improving, there was a rise for automobiles. This was the cars. And this starts all the way in 19, 1893. That's when the first American car was invented. Now, this was invented by Henry Ford in 1898. Now, if you've watched uh, one of the documentaries we've highlighted in the Highway Academy dashboard, you will find one documentary that's talking about Henry Ford. I mean, it goes into detail that I'm not going to go into in this class, but it highlights what happened during that time. Now, Henry Ford uh, entered the scene around 1898, and he played a very crucial role in the development of the American auto industry. And you find that in 1903, Henry Ford founded the Ford Motor Company. Now, later on, he developed the Ford Motor T that was introduced, which made car ownership very common. And you find that at the time, the challenge they had was how do you get these cars and they can now be used by the masses. Now, when they developed that Model T, this led to a greater need, uh, a demand for, there's a huge demand for car ownership. And from that, this led to a greater need for better roads and consistent standards in road design because more people wanted cars now in 1914 you find that there's this group of state highway engineers they met in atlanta and they were discussing about the need for collaboration and standardization 
and they felt like we need to come up with a standard. And you find that then in 1916, they had the Federal Aid Road Act that provided federal funding for road construction. Now they're using all those meth meth methods that we talked about earlier, because these are all affecting highway engineering. And they required states to meet certain standards, but then they realized they needed to form a body. So in 1919, the American Association of State Highway Officials was formed and it was developed consistent construction standards and coordinate road building efforts. Now again, this is the first time in history where we see this coming up, where a group of bodies come together to do this. Now, we are now going to talk about this body and how it developed. Now, as we proceed toward the 18, to, towards the 1920s after the World War, now what they did is they developed a uniform way for classifying and numbering highways, which led to the United States numbered highway system. Now this you can see in a number of ways in your country, for example, uh, some of them you have motorways can be numbered M1, M2, M3, others can be numbered A1, A2, A3, but the numbering is the same. But they developed that numbering. And this is one of the elements of when you're doing highway design is that there's a numbering that's given to all these different roads. <laughs> and how are they classified? And that's the issue they had to uh, address. We talk about this in the types of roads. Remember the time and this time they were coming up with this huge highway system. Now in the 1930s, this association began setting the standards for road design and constructions and maintenance. And everything was done according to that. Now the World War, World War II comes in and Afri I mean America now becomes a very strong superpower because other countries had used most of their resources in the First World War. Yet America was just supplying them, so it became a superpower. And in the Second World War, after they defeated Hitler, um, there was a lot of uh, construction that had to be done. But remember, at this time, Ford is still Henry. Uh, Ford is still in the picture. I mean, the number of cars that were being produced at the time, there was also a lot of rail. And if you watch the documentary, which again I've highlighted in the course, which talks about why America has no railroad you are going to find um, a very good detail that's explaining where this came from. So these guys sat together and realized, okay, we can make a lot of money. So what you're going to do is they had to buy out all the cars, the train cars that were in the system. And they said, we need to push for people to use more cars and we need to build bigger and wider roads. And what was so interesting at the time was that there's this clip which was this lady who's speaking. Wouldn't it be good uh, for us to have lovely roads. I think I'm going to let it roll for now. That this highway means a whole new way of life for the children and a way of life that we have a chance to help plan and, and to build. I mean, isn't it lovely? So you find that in the 1950s to the 1960s, again, this body, uh, it played a crucial role in designing and setting standards. Now, we are going to talk a bit about, you find that in 1954, uh, we we'll talk about that, where that's when uh, the, interstate highway, the interstate highway was proposed and funding was developed. Now again, there's another video that's talking in detail about this interstate highway. What was its purpose? But it was coordinating all the different states uh, of the United States. And remember, they had to make sure it's standardized and had to connect all the different parts. Now you find that as this body grew, uh, Later, in 1973, um, this body came to what we know now, which is the AASHTO, which is the American Association of State Highways and Transportation Officials. And the reason why it changed to that in 1973, now they were not only focusing on road, they were focusing on other modes of transport, for example, rail, air, and all that. And this became quite very crucial. Now, we're going to talk now about the interstate highway system. What really happened around 19? Uh, the 1950s up to the present time. Now, in 1954, the president at this time was Essen Hover, advocated for the National Highway Network. Now, remember again, this was being pushed by uh, the companies at the time, Ford and all the other automobile manufacturing companies and the oil companies, and realized there's a big cash grab here. And they decided to push for this National Highway Network. Now again, in 1956, they developed uh, the Federal Aid Highway Act was launched, and this allowed for the construction of the interstate highways. 
and in the late 1950s this construction began and they were building a number of miles i'm going to put the number of figures for the miles of uh, of highways that were building and from 1960s to the 1970s there had rapid expansion of this interstate highway system uh, which was connecting different cities and different regions and you find that most of the Ashto publications started around this time. So when they were developing this interstate highway system, they had this challenge. How do we handle the highways? How do we handle the urban streets? And then uh, a number of other issues. So in 1954, uh, Ashto, and at the time it was not yet Ashto, but the first publication was made for the Green Book. The Green Book is what we use in this course as one of the manuals. And this, when it was published, it was a geometric design for highways. So the first time you hear of a manual, there were earlier manuals before, but uh, they were not that compact. If you go back around 1920, uh, something came up, but 1954 is when we have the official uh, 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 publication of the Green Book, because there's the Green Book, the Blue Book, and the Red Book. But in 1954, we had the Green Book, which was focusing on the geometric design for highways. Now then later on, we had uh, something we called the Red Book, which was the geometric design um, standards for the interstate highways. Now also remember at the time when we were developing these highways in the 20s and the 30s, they had a book for the rural and also they had a book for the urban. And these, uh, these, these were manuals that were guiding the design for that. So then, as time went on in the 1960s, you find that there were now a number of issues regarding safety. Uh, now most of the areas were becoming urbanized, and you find that now they had to develop the Blue Book, which had a focus on road safety. They had done a number of tests on uh, how to have safer roads and all, and that's where the Blue Book comes in. And you find that um, up to the present day, uh, they are Ashto, has been updating all these different books and standards. And now currently the book you're looking at, the Ashto Green Book, I think is on the eighth edition, something along those lines. And that has inspired innovation. Now, what's very interesting is what happened. So after Ashto developed theirs in 1954, you find that then other countries started to develop. I mean, you find that when we look at Nigeria, uh, Nigeria started to also have development of its manuals. India started to have development of its manuals. UK, we talked about earlier when where the UK where they influ where they influenced the Macadam kind of construction of roads. Uh, you find that most of their manuals also started around 1970s and there was republications all the way up to 1990. Australia started their manuals also in the 60s but a little bit late. Then the babies, Uganda in 1980, Kenya 1980, and then there were revisions in 20, early 2010, something along the lines. And find like Rwanda had their first publication in uh, 20, 2010, around the same time. And they had earlier manuals around the earlier 2000s. So what you find is that most of these manuals were influenced by the manuals that were developed from the Green Book, the Red Book, and the Blue Book. And you find that the parameters you have in these manuals, they are kind of tweaked from what was in the green book to kind of mirror what's in the current conditions. Now these manuals keep getting updated every time. And the reason why they get updated every time is to mirror uh, what's on current conditions on ground, uh, what are the advancements in technology. For example, a value of stopping side distance. What was the stopping side distance for cars in the 1980s, even for passing, overtaking? Cars were much slower. So I find that if you're using values that are very old, I can tell you when we started, uh, the passing side distance was somewhere around 600 uh, for a certain given speed, but that has reduced by half because as they do these tests, uh, they confirm and validate uh, these design standards. And what's very important is you find that that's why some of these manuals are very expensive. They're not free. Most of the man countries from different countries, most of the manuals from the different African countries are free. For example, the Nigerian manual is free, Ugandan manual is free, Kenyan, Rwandan, uh, Tanzanian, Ethiopian, South African, they are free. Even the Australian manual is free, you just have to sign up for a subscription. The British manual is free, the Indian Roads Congress manual is free for India, but the one for America is not free because they are doing, they have tests that they do, uh, crashes, all that to update. 
And all we do is we keep picking from that. So the reason you find that this manual is like the grandfather of all manuals is on the history. And that's when you understand the history, you understand where you're getting everything from. It's like having this grand book that has all the history. Now, highway engineering has many other aspects of traffic. I've not gone into traffic, which talks about transit and oriented uh, movement and development. That's something different. Uh, that's for the traffic course. But for now, I'm just trying to help you understand how highway engineering developed and how it has transformed over the years. Now, if you understand this, now you're going to understand why we look at the different manuals and how you can use AI to leverage all that. But otherwise, in a nutshell, this is the brief history of highway engineering, and I hope to see you in the next lesson.